Well, good afternoon. My name is Dean Mazzarella, Mayor for the City, and uh, it is our afternoon update. It is, uh, what, did I say five today, or did I say four? I don't know. Where did March and April go? Anyway, the, um, let's see, lowest the numbers are in. Uh, okay, good. And yes, it is Tuesday, just in case, just want to remind you, it is Tuesday. And uh, we have lots to talk about today. So um, if you're just tuning in, again, my name is Dean Masserola, Mayor for the City of Leominster, and uh, we are in week 10. Can you believe it? Week 10. And we've learned a lot, haven't we? We learned a lot about ourselves, about the people around us, about situations, experiences, and about patience, right? Patience. So we are, um, let's, let's go through this real, there you go, we got me centered. Let's go through this, we've been getting calls all day. My phone has been, I can't keep a charge on it. So let's see if this helps. Here are the things that are uh, currently allowed. Banks, dog walkers, financial services, in-house services such as nannies, babysitting, house cleaning, real estate, open houses, currently allowed with restrictions, construction, Phase one, beginning May 18th, which is yesterday. Firearm retailers and shooting ranges, allowed. Home remodeling, allowed. In-home installations, phase one, construction related. Uh, painting, repairs, etc. Phase two is non-construction related. Carpet installation, home theaters, security systems. You're allowed to start in phase two. Manufacturing, phase one. Places of worship, phase one. Auto dealers and wholesalers, phase one. Uh, May 25th for curbside pickup and delivery only. Phase two, browsing inside the showroom with restrictions. Car washes are open. Drive-in movie theaters are, oh, I'm sorry, car washes, phase one, 25th. Aren't car washes already open? <laughs> I don't know. Drive-in movie theaters, the 25th. Hair salons, barbershops, 25th. General office space, phase one, May 25th except for Boston, and June 1st for Boston. So starting next, I guess, Tuesday, the holiday is Monday. Um, office space, general office space can open. Lab space starting next week on uh, Monday, Tuesday, whichever day. Libraries, phase one, May 25th for curbside pickups and delivery only. Phase two will be browsing inside the library with restrictions. Pet grooming, phase one, May 25th. Retail, such as clothing stores, toy stores, jewelry stores, nurseries, and garden centers that don't sell food products. Adult use cannabis stores, phase one, May 25th, um, for curbside pickup and delivery only. So it says retail, such as uh, clothing, toy stores, jewelry stores, um, Nurseries and garden centers that don't sell food products. Hmm. Nurseries and garden centers that don't sell food products. Um, don't know about that one. But anyway, um, phase one, they can do May 21st, 25th for curbside pickup. Phase two for browsing inside the store with restrictions. Um, casinos, phase two. Hotels, restaurants, phase three. Gaming, phase three and four. Driving skills currently allowed. Classroom instruction online, phase two, behind the wheel driving. So, you can see. Hotels, phase two. Other personal services such as nail salons, day spas, massage therapy, tattoo parlors, parlors electrolysis studios, phase two. Phase one, continue to uh, take out delivery and, and uh, restaurants. Phase one, continue with the takeout delivery, and then phase two can begin opening dining areas. Amusement parks, to be determined, but either phase three or four. Bars are phase three. Gyms, fitness studios are phase three. Uh, could happen earlier. Movie theaters are three. Museums are three. Ay, 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 ay. Any other ones here? Beaches will be closed until the day after Memorial Day. Golf is currently allowed with restrictions. Parks currently open, but service facilities will reopen in phase one, May 25th. Fishing, hunting, and boating, uh, phase one, the 25th. Outdoor adventure activities like, you know, ski areas, summer activities, zip lines, mountain biking, phase one, 
That's the 25th. Outdoor garden, zoos, reserves, and public installations, the 25th. Other outdoor recreation area, areas such as miniature golf, go-karts, batting cages, phase two. And, and let's see, uh, that's phase two. Outdoor performances, phase two. Summer camps, phase two. Recreational day camps, phase three. Residential camps. Phase two is recreational camps. Youth sports, some activities in phase two. Other indoor recreation, such as indoor batting cages, indoor carts, are three. Sightseeing, such as bus tours, duck tours, harbor cruises, whale watching, phase three. Tours, phase three. Historical sites to be determined, not phase one. Cruise ships, operating under federal guidance, no seal order currently in effect. So, that gives you an idea, right? Um, no, most of the construction projects um, kept going. And nothing's really changed. Uh, social distancing, that is the most important thing, regardless of where you work or what you're doing, is to keep that distance. Uh, so if it's a work area, make sure there's you know six feet apart. And when it can't be, then you wear your mask. I mean, that's pretty much how it's been, and it's gonna be that way for some time now. Let's get to, it's on my way here and somebody's yelling at me. Hey, you're gonna be late. I said, I know. Let me just give you the numbers for today. Um, so numbers today, 244 active, that's up six from yesterday, but that was a drop from the day before. 251 have completed. That's the number you wanna watch. You want, that's the number you wanna watch because those are the people that were tested positive but now have had uh, at least seven days without symptoms and are free of the virus. So that is uh, active is up six to 244 and complete is up 20 to 251. So that's good news on the upside for those that are being removed from the list. Okay, tomorrow, uh, beginning tomorrow, we are gonna be consolidating the two locations for masks. So uh, if you come to the front of City Hall between 9 and 4, we'll be able to give you those masks. I know we had some interruptions today. It was very busy. So we had to have, uh, we were trying to peel people off of inside City Hall and have them assist outside. Just got way too busy today. So we have uh, changed our round a little bit. And we are, uh, yeah, so we, are, we have taken everyone from the outside and brought them in, uh, from outside and brought them back inside. So we apologize for that. But tomorrow, one location, uh, get your masks, and that will be at Lumminster City Hall. If you have any questions, if somehow or another um, somebody's not getting back to you, they didn't get your email, something happened, you haven't gotten a response from city government, call our office at 978-534-7500, extension zero. If uh, emergency management for all other sort of activities, uh, extension 5055 at emergency management. And um, let's see. Uh, so libraries are allowed to be open, and the library director sent a, about a week or two ago, uh, sent a reopening plan, so they have a plan in place, so they can begin to do uh, curbside. Uh, so uh, watch for more details, we'll let, certainly let you know. I know people have been chomping at the bit to get back to the library, so um, here's an opportunity where you'll be able to get a few things, and they will, um, they will deliver uh, to you curbside. And again, for state assistance, if you've become unemployed, uh, you go to mass.gov, D-U-A, that's mass.gov, D-U-A. And if you're self-employed, contract unemployment benefits at mass.gov, P-U-A. Pay, pay uh, paycheck Protection Program, that's the one. I haven't heard that they've run out of money, but SBA. So on all of these um, loans for small businesses and um, self-employed, the best thing to do is go to our website, at lumister-ma.gov, you will find the links. And there's a very important one because it's a local one that we have jurisdiction over. There's $272,000 in it. I'm gonna go through some slides because there's a picture there. <clears throat> and uh, I'll be able to show you exactly what you're gonna see when you're on there. Sexual assault, domestic violence hotline, 6877-785-2020. Family health line for nursing home patients, 617-660-5399. And that seems to be where, you know, the bulk of this, I saw the stat today, it was like 60 something percent of all deaths have come from nursing homes and elder care facilities. 
and uh, you know they they've been doing the best that they can. Uh, it's just you know the supplies didn't come quick enough for them. I mean I think we ramped up hospitals, which that's what the data showed. I guess that's what they were looking at. That's what the scientists were saying, the people in the know, and and so anyway, our condolences to anybody that's lost a family member. Uh, I saw a few today, uh, family members, uh, people that posted that said, you know, they lost family members and looking through the obituaries every day, it's like you almost don't want to go to those pages. Uh, but anyway, um, let's go to the next page here because uh, for business questions, uh, again, uh, the best thing to do is to start off at our website and then from there, you can click on just about anywhere. It's going to take you to all those links and uh, obviously all day. Uh, during the, the work hours, you can call uh, Nikki Peters and uh, Melissa Tasker at 978-534-7500. Okay, so growing places tomorrow. They'll be over at the Lummister Senior Center parking lot from 11 to 12. Catholic Charities will be in operation uh, come Thursday and Friday from 8.30 to 4.30. And Ginny's Food Pantry operating from 10 to 1. Uh, the railroad's been out there replacing the tracks. So you should probably come in from the Mechanic Street side, or Spruce Street side, I should say, and uh, 10 to 1, and also they have a relationship and a partnership with the Lummist Emergency Management, and we've been working real closely with them to get uh, lunches delivered. So 978-537-1387. Okay, these are cases. I don't know. Let me just check to see if Wendy's updated these. And... Not as of yet. So as soon as she does, but those are yesterday's number. So right there, we're, well, the good part, and you know, if there's one death, that's too many, but it was down 65. Be interesting to see uh, what that trend uh, does. So the reopening plan, as we talked about, uh, it's really going to be um, uh, nothing more than what we've done, right? Um, hand washing and keep your distance. Right, keeping your distance is probably the one most, um, because I don't know what, how long somebody's had a mask. I don't know the quality of the mask. You know, they do help. But the one sh certain part is for those people that stay home, they're not gonna get the virus, but it could be brought into them. But let's just say that's a safe place. Um, the other area is if you cannot keep safe, di safe di distance, then obviously a mask. And I, I mean, it's pretty straightforward for everything, no matter what it is that you do, um, it's there. Um, same protocol for everything, whether you work at work, keep your you know, distance six feet, your workstations and work areas six feet apart. If you can't, you keep your mask on, uh, clean things like your phones and your desk and counters and all of that. So it's pretty straightforward, I'd say, at this particular point. We went through the phases. And uh, they have a website. The Boston Globe, actually, uh, a compliment to them. They actually did a nice job breaking down. In fact, that's what I was reading from. But you can also go to mass.gov and see what's open and what's not, and when things can open, and what phase one, two, and three means, and what the timeline is on that as well. Uh, no matter what uh, phase, bu uh, businesses will be asked to comply with the following. And there you go, six feet, face coverings, provide hand washing, sanitize regularly, training for employees on all of the above. Plan for employees who become ill and for their return. Establish cleaning protocols, right? They're all right there. Uh, the state has, a pro, uh, uh, has their sort of dashboard and the reopening plan. And, uh, yeah, so they go to their dashboard and they'll tell you what's going on. Red and green, red, right, means stop. Green means go, unless you're colorblind and you can't see any of them. So it tells you kind of what's going on. And... How are they going to be, remember, the governor said we're going to be using data to make our decisions as we move to the next phases. So seven-day average, that's average. Of, so we've had this up five, down five, up ten, whatever. So it's the seven-day average of positive tests, three-day average of hospitalizations, hospital usages of the intensive care surge capacity, and a three-day average of deaths by date of death. So who can open? Yes, churches, manufacturing, construction, all of that. Um, we went through all of this just a minute ago. And phase three is out to June. Uh, so we're getting a lot of information uh, that's coming in to us from various 
National Association of, and those various uh, groups are in touch with, you know, state and federal government in terms of what can and can't be done. Uh, anyway, if a, on construction sites now, there's no handshaking, uh, nobody's sick showing up. Uh, they have to have a, a, a COVID-19 compliance officer on site, no activities with large groups, you know, those sorts of things. It, it's pretty much going to be with us. The mask is uh, just a regular, you know, item now. It's part of our daily, um, it's, it's part of our daily usage. So all of the uh, places of worship know exactly what they need to do. Um, so they need to follow all of these um, areas, all of the protocol that you see there. Remember, everything that you see here is available on our website, and that is lemister-ma.gov, and everything you see here, again, is available there. And so if, you, if I'm speaking too fast and I'm going through these slides too quickly, um, in some cases it's because, well, we've read these off over and over, and so some people may get a little, you know, may tune out if they see the same things over and over. Um, Anyway, Governor Baker announced this uh, disbursements of Federal Ca uh, CARES Act, and we're working to put uh, our allotment together of $3.6 million. Uh, grant Office and Emergency Management are working with all departments for our FEMA reimbursement. FEMA uh, eligible expenses are, are reimbursed by 75%, and the other 25 is paid by the CARE Act, and the fire department has applied for three grants, one for a brush truck application, two for $60,000 in PPE, and new smoke detector programs, and the police department has applied for a special COVID grant, $89,000 for PPEs and overtime. Okay, I'm trying. I'm trying. So there are CDC, web, uh, you can go to the CDC website. They have guidelines for everything now. So there they are for schools, and as we said yesterday, we will look for an update around um, from the school department and, and the school committee around August 1st with a number of different options that will be available. We can't stop learning. Kids need to retain. Um, you know, uh, interesting enough, the number one item in the last year and a half has been this phrase used by school departments all over the country called social emotional learning. So if there is somebody out there, and I say this not with sarcasm or skepticism, but I ask this um, because I'd like to know. So how is that being addressed while students are out of school? If anybody has, you can even answer me offline, just go ahead and message me or email me. Because I'm, I, I, I Googled it late last night. It was probably around midnight. And I was just interested because we were beginning to um, cultivate this environment. It, it became the new buzzword in school systems around the country, not just here, but every seminar was centered around social emotional learning. And I just wonder how um, we've been able to continue with that social emotional learning while students haven't been there. And so I'm curious about that. If somebody, believe me, this is not meant to, you know, this was such a big deal and then suddenly stepped aside. And, and, and again, I'm following along, and all of a sudden it falls off the other side. And I'm thinking, well, how did this, how did we transition? And there may be an answer for that. And I know uh, in special ed, those students cultivate an extreme close bond with their uh, teachers and, um, and aides of all kinds. And it's been difficult for them because that's more of a person to person. And I know that's been stressful for them. Stressful for them as special ed teachers and the aides as they try to um, use, the, you know, as much technology as they can. I know they've done special things for their students. So again, those are the two areas of, of concern that I'd like to see the state um, step up to. So the next time I get on a conference call, those will be the two areas that I um, would like to see addressed um, by those in charge. Did I go by that one? So, uh, CDC guidelines, you can, if you have a business, you don't have to, you know, you can take a picture right here or you can go to our website, but you go to CDC website, everything you can ever imagine is on there. And there are guidelines for everything because they knew they could only say, hey, stay home so long, and then people are going to begin asking questions, and they knew they had to have an answers. And there they are for restaurants and bars. Uh, we were at, um, let me just change my page here. 
we were at Texas Roadhouse this morning, and uh, there they are, you know, getting ready for that, for the opening. And um, they're very aware. They're a progressive company, been watching what's going on, successful at the takeout business. But uh, you, can, you, can, you can just about guarantee that any restaurant that, that's here in Lummis, that we've been preaching to these restaurants now for a good six weeks about how to, you know, how to transition into uh, business again, as, as we once saw it, and um, experimenting and we're looking at best practices. Most of these other companies, like restaurants, bars, belong to these national association and think tanks. So they have some, you know, they have, a, uh, they have people that, you know, they, these industries, whether it's the association of retailers, whatever it is, SBA, everyone's been out there sort of trading ideas. So I assume by time, uh, between what we've done and what these other national groups have done, that most businesses will be 100% ready. And it's just some tweaking as we go along, but we'll be ready uh, to go pretty quickly. Uh, youth programs and camps, childcare programs, new CDC, uh, CDC guidelines, mass transit. As I said yesterday, that'll definitely be a um, work in progress, turtle steps, baby steps. China is now using the same amount of fuel as, uh, and the demand is back because people are using uh, their own vehicles rather than using public transportation. Mass transit is again getting ready. There is, there is, um, when you go to our website, lamista-ma.gov, you're going to see that picture of City Hall, and right below it, right below it is going to be a, um, they'll click on to, to access that local uh, grant program. So make sure, I mean, I can't pull you out of your house or your office or your business and force you to file for these, but I can uh, only um, urge you urge you to uh, apply for some of these funds. So we have about $272,000, and there's two phases of it, but I'm not going to read through this. I'm just going to tell you, download it, apply for it. Uh, if you can't fill in all the spots, then call us at City Hall, 534-7500, and we will help you. You'll be surprised. That, you know, it's just like veterans benefits. There are so many people who qualify for veterans or spouses' vet, uh, veteran benefits that don't apply. And I don't know whether they're just worried that somebody may say no, but apply. If they say no, then maybe there's a conversation clearing some things out and maybe things weren't answered correctly or to, you know, didn't meet the satisfaction. Maybe that gets cleared up and you get those benefits. It's $2,500 for qualifying businesses. Funds will be for rent, mortgage, and uh, utility payments. Deadline is May 31st. So we're running out of time. We really are. And we've got a day off next week, so we won't be staffing City Hall. But uh, please, uh, apply for the funding. And also, there's a state opportunity also on our website, lemister-ma.gov, for the state treasurer's office, because they're accepting applications for small businesses in gateway cities. And that only applies to gateway cities, and Lemister is one of the gateway cities in Massachusetts. And you had to have been affected by COVID, but that's, that's everybody. So fill those things out. And there we are. If you're looking for data, and I know some people stay tuned for this in particular, um, if you average out the Worcester County area, if you average in those last eh, four, five, six days, we're not at seven yet, but those numbers are, are looking better all of the time. There's our dashboard for public health indicators. And... Uh, Remember I said, you know, remember the whole thing was we're trying to level off? But if you really look, um, there's minuses everywhere, right? So this is statewide. So a seven-day weighted average of positive test rates, you see it coming down, it's minus 64, all the way down to the three-day average of COVID-19 uh, deaths uh, is reducing. But again, if, if you're, you, know, you lost a loved one, that doesn't help you to hear that, you know, the death rate is going down, although I'm sure you're happy for those families who are having a better experience. But yes, um, you didn't join in early. Did you say anything about when the library and City Hall will be open again? Yes. So um, I, li, li, uh, City Hall has been open, only we come out to you. Uh, so we've been bringing, uh, so if you need something, you come and there's a list of phone numbers. You call, we'll get it for you, we'll bring it out. And starting on Tuesday, the Lomista Public Library will start doing 
a curbside pickup. So you can order things uh, by phone or online, I assume, or by email, and they'll leave them out for you or put them out. I'm not sure the logistics of that yet, and, uh, but that starts next week. Um, and what we may do, what we're thinking of doing at City Hall is making, uh, it seems to be working well where people just pull up, is to make a little drive up area where uh, maybe permanently, well, temporary, temporarily, but maybe permanently, depending on what happens. So it would be basically like a drive up and uh, you would come in uh, to the drive up and, and uh, or walk up to it, tell us what you need. And um, the employees inside will get the information, papers, forms, bring them out to you, have you sign them. A little covered area where you're, uh, you know, removed from the elements. And then we just run the information in and out to you. So that may, that, that's certainly an option, but we didn't close City Hall. We're still open and, and we're getting things as fast as you can uh, out to you uh, when possible. Okay. So um, there's, your, there's your numbers there. That's the numbers you want to watch. Thank you. Um, negatives all the way around. Good news. Need to keep that up. Public fields, I think, was phase three. Daily and cumulative confirmed cases. There you are. There's the line showing more testing. Uh, there are the lines showing it, uh, the daily cumulative confirmed cases dropping. Testing by date, again, is going up, and a test positives going down. Cases by county, prevalence by county, and certainly the uh, lighter color means the fewer people. And then it gets into the lemons, the blue, with 533.2 uh, to 1,668. And then you get into those other areas like Essex County, Suffolk County, and Plymouth County. Those are all the dark colors. That's 2,000 plus. And hospitalization is uh, at 2,533. Uh, count on cases currently in ICU at 674 across the state. There's your daily and cumulative deaths by, uh, there's, the, there's the testing on one end on the left, and there's the death rate. And obviously, the total now is 5,862. Cases and case by age group, everybody gets it, young, old. This, and the average age is now 53. It was 52, I think, yesterday. And then let's look at this, though, hospitalization. This is where you start to see it separating. So everybody gets it. There's that slide, right, all age groups. And then, however, not, everybody, not every age group ends up in the hospital. In fact, the average age is 63. Then we look at taking a step further and those that pass away from this virus. Let's go back two more. Everybody gets it, just about, right? And, and, and then here you see uh, everybody gets it, but not everybody ends up in the hospital. And then you see the death rate. And it, it's actually peaked up around the 60 to 69. But really, it goes to 70, 79, and then it just, just jumps up at 80 plus years old. There you go, pretty much equal. Uh, who gets it? Uh, who, who, who dies from this? Pretty much men and women equal. Uh, deaths with previous hospitalization at 56%. Um, and let's see, and 98% those that have passed away with underlying conditions. And still, you know, I've heard so many stories of people that were like, you know what, my mother had Alzheimer's or dementia or a, a problem, but she was doing well. Or he was doing well. And then they got the virus, and that pretty much uh, accelerated everything. Uh, regarding stores in the mall, I think they're, they're phase three. I don't know. The other ones... It, uh, so it looks like phase two might be curbside pickup for those other stores that are on the outside of the mall. That's what it looks like. But again, you can go to the website, go to mass.gov, and every single thing is, is listed there. And let's see. Okay, if you need to be tested, go to Lumbister Hospital, Health Alliance. Under the parking garage, under that parking deck, 8 to 4 o'clock, Monday to Friday, 10 to 2 on weekends. You must have symptoms and or you must uh, have been exposed to somebody with COVID-19 and they must have had symptoms. I think I understand it correctly. And at Reliant, you make a phone call and tell them what's going on. They'll, they'll, uh, they'll assign somebody to you and you tell them what's going on and they may or may not uh, decide to test you depending on things. But eventually I think they're going to get to more and more of us. What is it? I haven't seen the numbers today, but it's 469, 479. 479,000 people have been tested in Massachusetts. 
Um, yes. Anybody here, is there any real good, anybody like a good artist or graphic arts person? If you'd like a little project to work on, yeah, you can come in for marriage. They'll get you a marriage certificate. You can apply for a marriage certificate. Um, just call, and they will uh, print them out. Diana, Diana's in there, and she's printed out all these, these forms for you. We'll get you registered. It may take a little longer, but we'll get you. Um, I don't have access to the states. I, I, we may have access to the states uh, total recovered, but you could probably just get that from their website. If you like, I can start adding this on to our um, site. But I know that the rate last week, and usually this number comes out on Wednesday, so for everyone that's tested, 10% come back positive, and then there's a 3% hospitalization. I think the 10% has probably actually gone down. What we don't know is how many people are tested positive with no side effects. Um, that number we don't know. So I will try to get those to you. According to the state's website, mass.gov, 27,812 people have recovered in Massachusetts. Uh, okay, does that help? Well, I missed this numbers while I'm here. 244, so we're up six on the test positives. 251 completed, so they're in the recovered list. That's up 20. That's the biggest jump we've had. So a total, and I know there was some misunderstanding. So let me just spend a minute explaining this. So since March, when they started keeping track of everyone who tested positive, there have been 495. So figure we're close to, we're close to uh, 50,000 people, that's what I'm told that the next census should be between 45 and 50. So let's round it off and say uh, 50,000. And let's round this off, this number at 495, and let's say. So would that be like 1% of the population? Is that correct? Who's the math person around here? I'm not going to use my calculator because my phone's going to die if I do anything with it because I haven't been able to keep a charge on it for the last two months. So, yes. Um, what did I start to say? Is there anybody out there that's a talented artist that could help us? Or somebody that's graphic arts? Um, just go ahead and message me at, uh, well, just go to my Facebook and just message me. Uh-oh. Vegas is calling. Should we take this call? This is Vegas. Hello? Mr. Mazzarella, Edward Albert, how are you? Ed, I'm on the... Um, I'm on my afternoon update, but I saw Las Vegas, and I, I thought maybe I won a lot of money, and so I'm going to have to call you back. Did I win a lot of money? No, sir, but I need some flags. Okay. Well, I will call you back, and I'm sorry we didn't, uh, I didn't, like, make a lot of money because I was in a very sharing mood today. <laughs> I'll call you back. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll have somebody call you back, right? See that? I thought Vegas. I'm like... Maybe I'll change my, so it comes up as Las Vegas, Las Vegas. So yeah, if there's somebody talented who want to help me with a quick project, um, I think I have something that's pretty cool. And uh, you might be able to help me. It's not like a long project that's going to, you know, take forever. Okay, let's see what we have left for slides here. Uh, taxes are due June 1st, so you got a little week and a half or so to go. Anything that came in after that, May 10th, March 10th, yes. So yesterday somebody had asked over the weekend, they asked that if you go and pay online, and, but you didn't pay May 1st, but you're paying now, they said that they got an extra fee in there, that some extra $79 fee came. Not the case. That's, so we, we checked that. But if anybody else notices that, then please let us know. So any bills that come in after March 10th, imagine that, March 10th. I mean, it's almost June. We're talking about March 10th when this all started. Uh, bills need to be paid by June 30th. You won't get assessed any extra fees, late fees, surcharges, whatever it is that government likes to do. Here we go. For Comcast Essentials Program, that means you get two months free. But you couldn't already be a customer with uh, Comcast for three months. So if you haven't been a customer and you qualify, which most people do, you get two months for free and then it's $9.95 a month. How's this tie on to what we've been doing uh, with electronic devices, we are giving out electronic devices every day to students who otherwise would never have the chance to have an electronic device to be connected to the internet. So uh, where do you get the internet? So you get, now you get an electronic device. Where do you get the internet? 
right here at Comcast Essentials Program, 1-855-846-8376. Um, I've had some people tell me it was pretty easy. They had to give like a Medicaid card number or something and somebody else gave, but it was nothing that people didn't already have at home. So one more time, 1-855-846-8376. Stimulus checks are on the way. If it's auto deposit, they've already made them. If you're waiting to get something in the mail, sit tight. I know some people just got them late last week, so sit tight. And if not, go to the irs.gov and answer the, uh, you'll find it just, there's a search bar, say I haven't got my check yet, and it'll tell you exactly what's going on. And Memorial Day is coming up, and this is the Veterans Project. I kept saying it was Veterans Day because, well, I looked at Veterans Project, and the next thing I said was Veterans Day. No. It's Memorial Day coming up, and uh, we do have exercises. We have a number of, uh, we have a number of guests that will be pre-taping comments, so you'll be able to catch all this. And we will have nine people uh, to keep within our nine uh, in our social distancing. We'll have nine people at, every, at starting a town. We then go to St. Cecilia's, then, I'm sorry, St. Leo's, then off to St. Cecilia's. Then, uh, so we go to every cemetery, then, and GIR, and the uh, Evergreen Cemetery, we, we'll be everywhere because we pay tribute and thanks to those who have gone before us, who served in the military, and uh, people have been really sprucing up the cemeteries. I guess people have more time, spending more time at the cemetery. And uh, so again, uh, each, our tradition will continue. It will just, some of it will be televised, some of it will be live, only we won't be able to attract the audiences that we did in the past. So if you see one of these markers placed flat on the ground, they're called veterans markers, and they look in a little sort of, the little TLC, then, uh, you know, clean up around the edges. It comes up pretty quick, takes about under five minutes, and uh, you've really been a big help to us. So thank you. Hey, less than two weeks. Eh, closer to two weeks. Well, no, because Monday, Memorial Day, we won't be picking up leaves. So March 30, May 30th, the last day. So please get those leaves picked up. Got a picture in the, uh, somebody sent me a picture today. We're having a prize. This, you're getting prizes. If you become the per first person who's raked up the most amount of leaves and put them at the curb and send a picture to me. D Mazzarello at lemonster-ma.gov. You can find my uh, information on our website as well. So. Anyway, love is the sidewalk sale coming up, old-fashioned bargain days. Interesting enough, just yesterday, uh, looking through some of the pictures on the Worcester Telegram and Gazette uh, website, they have like Lemonster and then all these old pictures. Lo and behold, there they are, old pictures of the old uh, the Lemonster uh, old-fashioned bargain days, which used to be like this big thing in Lemonster. Well, we're bringing it back. And it's going to be citywide, not just downtown, but citywide. We figure this is one of those good events that we can have that will keep people socially distanced, will still get people out, and still support local businesses. And any local business can participate. In fact, say you run a manufacturing operation, and there's some things that you're like, you know what? I have some seconds, not 100% perfect, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to give a great deal to the uh, citizens of Lemonster, and uh, we're going to participate. You let us know, we'll put you on the map, and uh, people will be able to see you. Registry update, if there's any questions about the registry of motor vehicles, go to their website. If you can't find it there, then 857-368-8000. Shop to your drop, participating stores. These are all the businesses that are still operating, some virtually, some at curbside. More and more will be coming online starting the 25th, right? I can't wait. It's been my own business, and it, you know what? We didn't apply for any government funding from anyone. We're not going to, but it's been a haul, and this is, you know, I get it. When, you're, uh, when you, you own a business or have owned a business, you understand that side. When you are somebody that uh, lost a friends, close friends, who've lost a loved one from this virus, you get it. If you know people, I mean, it's just, you, know, you just put your, you know, your, your able to put yourself in somebody else's shoes so you get it from all ends. So I'm not complaining. It is our busy season, or we're supposed to be, but um, that's okay. Um, I am not complaining. I'm healthy, and uh, we'll, we'll do whatever it takes. We're not applying for government money. We're not going to apply for grants. Uh, but we, just like everybody else, uh, we hope we're turning the corner here, and we'll wait, and when it happens, it happens. But a lot more stores are doing cur curbside right now. So it's time for Dr. Mazzarola's boot camp. 
And tomorrow morning, I'm taking appointments at 9 o'clock. So you want to watch that show? I, um, Dr. Mazzarella will be taking appointments tomorrow. No co-payment. Dr. Mazzarella never accepts co-payments. Chocolate chip cookies and Twix bars, but never, um, never, and I do say never, do we accept co-payments. All right, I lost my page. See that? Drifting away on you. Okay, so this is real easy. This is like the easiest thing. You know, the, remember how hard it was to, you know, they had to make songs up to, to help you with your, uh, f for your, your, your uh, alphabet. And then things that you had to remember for your uh, times, ta multiple, the times table multiplication, adding, all this stuff, right? All these little tricks to get, this is easy, right? Keep six feet away. Take the mask off if you're six feet away, if you feel comfortable. If you don't, but if you're going into a store and a, a place where there's other people and you're not going to be able to maintain that, then the mask goes on, right? If you need a mask, this is so simple. Just pull up in front of City Hall five days a week from 9 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and voila, we're open, right? Get you those masks. Stay six feet away. That's the best thing that you could possibly do, okay? Uh, what else? Well, assume you have the virus. Assume everybody you come in contact with has the virus. Assume that every surface you come in contact with is somehow or another compromised, so clean it, right? So just understand that. Clean it. Clean, clean, clean. Soap and water. This is a virus that doesn't like soap and water. Hand sanitizer. And you are like 99% of the way there. That's Dr. Mazzarella's update on that. And let's see if we have any more slides today. Hey, we, we have such a long list that we were only thanking just some of the people and we didn't have room to keep thanking everybody, but we are going to acknowledge all of those. We have so many generous people and generosity isn't just writing a check for a whole lot of money. It's sometimes 10 bucks, five bucks, 50 cents, donating food to the hospital, masks, whatever it might be. Okay, here we go. Let's get the state numbers before we leave here. Okay, state numbers. Cases today, 87,000. This is interesting. Uh, 87,925 people have been confirmed with the COVID virus uh, as of March 10th or whatever that date is. But today it's up 873. But remember, 8,000 people were tested. So it seems to be that 1% number in there, but 1 and 10% seems to be the ratio locally as well as uh, around the state. Um, Worcester County cases are up 140. That's like some of the lowest we've had. And tested, again, uh, 476, almost 477,000 people have been tested uh, in uh, Massachusetts and 87, almost 88,000 tested positive. And so today, uh, tested about 7,800 more people were tested than yesterday, and about 873 tested positive. And uh, deaths went up a little bit today, which we don't want to see any at 870, uh, I'm sorry, at 76. But still, when you average it, the three-day average, um, it is coming down. Boy, I could drink this water all day. And let's see, senior shopping hours call ahead. Restaurants, dining, and takeout, more and more. If uh, I know Columbia Tavern's going online, whether they've gone online yet, I'm not sure, but just about everybody's open. But call for their hours, and if you can at all uh, sort of not just call between 5 and 6, because everybody calls at 5 and 6. Maybe you order your food, take it home, and then uh, eat it later if you can. You know, some foods you can't. But you know what? If you don't, make, if you don't mind the wait, then uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Off-premises alcohol, some businesses are doing that. They have special licenses for it, so you can get alcohol. So ask when you call if you're looking for alcohol. There are conditions like anything else, but we haven't had any complaints, so that's a positive thing. It's been beautiful weather, and it's perfect. The mayflies are out, but, you know, we were out the other day, and we didn't hit a mayfly. We didn't hit a mosquito, nothing. But we did get to meet Johnny Cash. He's a dog. We met him at Sholin Farms. Pretty cool dude. And so we have 26 miles of trails. I wonder if anybody out there has been like doing like a trail a day. Is anybody, I mean, how many trails? I'm gonna ask that question tomorrow on Facebook. I'm gonna ask, how many trails do you think you visited here in Lemister? Has anybody visited them all? And how do you visit them? Is you go to lemister-ma.gov and you go to the city's recreation department web website 
and uh, they have a list of all our parks in the city, and they're all well marked. They have maps. Our partners are the Lemister Trail Stewards, and uh, maybe you want to join up with them. So anyway, plenty of parks. Uh, you you must stay off the equipment, right? That's the only thing. Is please stay off the equipment. Uh, census, if you haven't filled it out yet, we're at 66.3 percent. We're higher than the national, the state average. But let's get let's get like 100 percent. Wouldn't that be cool if we could run around and brag that we got the highest rate of anybody? Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, of course it would. And there you go. There's our slides. There's all our information. Go to the website. Boston Globe, as I said, put out a really nice. You know, what's open, what's not, when are things going to open. They did it in really simple format. But you can also go to the state website, and at the state website, uh, all of that information is there as well. You can go chronologically by alphabet. Uh, they have a couple of different ways that you can do the search. So looks like better days are coming. Looks like we've, um, okay, let's see. We've got the Health Alliance numbers. We're full of numbers today. Health Alliance numbers right now are at 29 confirmed Patients that are testing positive for COVID and are hospitalized, and six in the uh, intensive care unit. So even those numbers, we'd obviously like to see those um, continue to drop. So I don't know how many minutes we did it in, guys, but we're, we shaved off a little bit today. Yesterday we were a little better. Today it's just so much here to share with you. Um, again, masks tomorrow. If you go on Facebook... Just share that, because you probably have a different group of friends than I do in a lot of cases. But I'll, I'll wake up, and I get on at 3, 3.15 in the morning, and it's like, anybody know where I can find a mask? So share it with your friends and just say yes. Every day, Monday through Friday, from 9 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon, you can have as many masks as you need. Okay? So as many masks as you need. Don't take more than you need, because, well, do you know, what did Jim say today? All right, this is a... This is a pretty interesting fact. You know those masks were donated to us. Let me just give you a number here, because I, I thought it was the wrong number, but then I realized it, it's not. Let's see what he said. I think the number was like almost 20,000 masks were uh, circulated and, and uh, given out in the city. 20,000. So our goal is to get everybody with a mask. So we've got, you know, we're almost halfway there, right? So again, nine to five, nine to four tomorrow, stop by City Hall, 25 West Street, and we will get you those masks, as many as you need, but don't take more than you need because, well, obviously, you saw what happened with toilet paper and everything else. There's a shortage of like, did you know there's a shortage of acrylic now? You know, they're making all those um, 30,000. 30,000 masks? Oh, wait a minute. 30,000 masks? Is that what you're saying? I just said, how many? That's a, that, that, that can't be possible. I'm not leaving until we find out that number. 30,000 masks? That's unthinkable. That's incredible. But we just, people pull up, we give them to them, and uh, we've helped Fitchburg and other communities, Gardner and, and Marlboro and other communities uh, get uh, in touch with the same donor and more than glad to, to circulate them amongst the community. So you, when do you say 30,000 masks have been given out? We're going to find that out, and then we're going to go. Then we're really, really, really going to go. Let's see what she says. And the answer is... Mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm Nope, I guess we're not going to get it. Okay, we are out of time. want to thank LTV. Uh, okay, there's all these things that come in. They just, the messages just keep on coming in. 30,000 masks from two points in the city. Yes, 30,000. I thought it was 20. 30,000. We're more than halfway there. Let's get everybody a mask in the city, right? That's, that's how. And maybe you need replacements at this particular point. If you've got these, you know, they're not going to last forever. Started giving them out two weeks ago. So, um, sure. All right, we're going to cut it off now. Dr. Mazzarella will be uh, taking appointments and giving medical yeah, advice tomorrow. Uh, from my, uh, tomorrow, I think we're going to be in the office. We were going to be at Sholin. But they're spraying, so we're going to pick another day. This morning, uh, we were at Texas Roadhouse and uh, uh, gave Joe a little recognition. It's been, you know, for a national chain, five years is a long time to, to be in one place. And it's been a, a great uh, supporter and, and uh, a big help to the big city. Okay, of oh, Laminster. We're out of time. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Remember, be kind, be generous when you can, be nice.
be well, be the care. See you tomorrow morning. Nine o'clock.